Today, this mom of 15 is going to talk about homeschool planning. Stay tuned. Hi there, mommies. Today, we are going to talk about homeschool planning. Don't you love my scribbles? <laughs> But anyway, I want to get right into it. I've been homeschooling for over three decades. Um, and I just wanted to give you some pointers and some ideas. As I know this is the time of year when we're really getting serious. We're really trying to decide what kind of materials we're going to use, how we are going to use them. So first of all, what's the first step? Step number one is to research and educate yourself right because if you don't know what homeschooling is if you don't know its advantages if you don't know its pitfalls if you don't even know what education means period except for what you got in public school you need to research educate and educate yourself and sometimes you need to refresh yourself on what are the most important things because we often forget especially when you've got that new curriculum catalog or you're looking online and you're watching all the videos you can get really super lost but I'm going to tell you that you need to simplify one thing that I would like to read to you and you can find this on the internet still this was written by a woman by the name of Colette Longo and uh, there's a little shadow on here I'm sorry but Colette Longo was the moderator of a Yahoo group I don't know if she still is um, anyway, she was one of the moderators of the Robinson, Robinson Curriculum email group. I guess it's an email group. And this is way back in uh, like 2001, 2006. So this is really old, but it's it stood the test of time. Some things are just true because they're true. So this is what she says. It's 10 ways to simplify homeschooling. Okay, number one, keep everything as simple as you can. Jesus wrote with a stick in the dirt, and he was the greatest teacher that ever lived. He used no curriculum or flannel graphs or lesson plans. Homeschooling can be made far more complicated than it should be. A simpler approach is much more effective. Two, stick to the three R's. They form the foundation of lifelong learning in every field because they are the tools of study. There will be no need to formalize any other subject if the children are doing their best in these three because people who are well grounded in reading writing, and math will approach other subjects boldly, independently, and confidently. And I can attest to that in my own life with my own children. Number three, let the children teach themselves as much as they are able to. This teaches them responsibility, intellectual independence, and builds confidence. It's also better for the parent-child relationship because you can focus on parenting instead of playing school teacher. Number four, use the most direct method available for reading, read. For writing, write. For math, do it. And for Bible, read it. Don't fall for catchy curriculums or methods that are really just something else for you and your child to learn. Five, don't worry about your child's age or grade. Just let him do the best he can each day. Children grow intellectually like they do physically. In spurts, although we may have an audience of skeptical relatives, Homeschooling is not a circus, and we refuse to train our children to do tricks for people. Number six, minimize distractions in the home. Watch for excessiveness in entertainments, snacking, outings, phone conversations, and the like. And also, uh, it would be internet these days, wouldn't it, or their phones. Okay, these sorts of things can easily get out of hand and compete with the effectiveness of a homeschool and set of a homeschool and sap the family of time and energy. Seven, seek quality over quantity. A few tapes of great music, well, it was tapes back then, <laughs> and now it's streaming or MP3s, right? A small case of carefully chosen books, a few special playmates, and an occasional outing is better than a large but poor quality collection. Eight, if you must document your school activities, do it after the fact. This way, you will not make promises you cannot keep. If you are required to make lesson plans, be as vague as permissible. Don't let transcripts, diplomas, records, and tests determine your academic plans. Focus on learning and the rest will follow. Number nine, 
put the needs of your youngest, most vulnerable children first. If an older child gets a little behind in school, I'm sure you can forgive yourself. But if something happened to the toddler while you were busy homeschooling, I don't think you would be able to say the same. Number 10. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and don't neglect to seek him early, giving him the first fruits of your day, and teach your children to do the same. I know that you are tired and that there aren't enough hours in your day, but we serve a God who can make the sun stand still. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's Matthew eleven, twenty-eight through 30. So I hope that gives us a good start. So you need to research all this stuff. And I have some little bit of suggestions here that I can I can throw out there for you. Uh, Ruth Beechick is just an amazing person to, to use for your research. And she, this book right here, the uh, A Biblical Home Education, is a great resource. And I do suggest that you try to find this and read it maybe this summer, if you can. Uh, she's also written the three R's. She kind of explains how all this stuff works. Because when you're first te uh, teaching your children, even if you've been doing it for a while, you might forget or might not understand how to go about teaching them in a way that will really stick and that they'll really learn. This is also a book for her, by her. Uh, you can teach your children successfully. And this uh, covers grades four through eight, as you can see. And so this is a great book. You can read through this, glean ideas. You don't have to put everything in practice, but she just gives you some ideas. Besides that, I highly recommend this book from Dr. Raymond and Dorothy Moore. It's the Successful Homeschool Family Handbook, okay? And so mine's all messed up because, you know, I have loved this book. My children have loved this book. Yes, it's one of those books that's all used, right? So you can still find this online. I know these are older books, but remember this was the time before we had everything all over the internet and so much stuff. This is what everything else is based on. If you know this, if you arm yourself with this knowledge, then you're going, you're not going to fall for stuff. It's not going to work for you. That's very expensive. You can DIY your homeschool using these types of books. Okay. So that's the first step. Now, the second step to successful, simple homeschool planning is to gather your materials. So number two is gather materials. Now, you, we talked last time in my last video, we talked about how you can go about that for cheap or free, right? You can go all over the internet. You can print things out. If you want to watch that video, I have like stacks of stuff I showed. Okay. So, uh, uh, so you're going to gather all this stuff, all this cool stuff that you'd like to cover it. Now you probably will not, will not get to all of it. If you have, if you're like me, I mean, I like to gather stuff. I don't know about you. Girls can shop, right? So I'm going to show you like a, a stack of different items that I have gathered over the years. I just grabbed this from my bookshelf. So this is something people tell me that you can you can reprint this. And so um, this is so cool. You can find this for free on, on Internet Archive. I think I've written about this um, on my blog and I have like links to it. It is the coolest thing. If you're just teaching your children basic numbers, this is like a story. And it, oh, you're going to do all kinds of things. Anyway, I don't want to go on. Stop, Sherry, stop. Okay, so I've got this. I've got another uh, old arithmetic book. I've stuck in this stack. Um, here's the pictorial electric, uh, sorry, <laughs> pictorial eclectic primer from McGuffey's. There's that. Um, here's Harvey's elementary grammar. I was going to say glamour. Grammar and composition. Here's something I put together for my kids when they were, when we were just like notebooking, where they could pick like something from these lists and do it kind of thing. Here's King Alfred's English. This is something that every child needs to go through. And there's, there's a uh, free, all kinds of free stuff to go with this. Um, there are even uh, questions and tests and everything you can get online. And a homeschool mom wrote this book, and she, it's really in interesting. Uh, this is the world of chemistry. This is just a possibility for a science that I pulled out. So here, here's a whole bunch of different 
type items that I've got. So I've got this huge, like you can have a huge pile. You can have a pile for each child and it's very visual. And that's what I like about the next step, which I'm going to suggest. So you get all your materials together. That includes um, all your homeschool supplies, all of your um, science experiments or handicraft or whatever, if, whatever you've planned. Now, when you plan, you might not want to go too far ahead. Um, some of us only plan six weeks ahead, right? And we might have like a general big direction, but six weeks for some of us is just perfect, right? Some will do three months and their life is pretty predictable. So they can do that. Maybe they're not as creative or crazy, should we say? Some can go maybe six months. Some can go the whole year, the whole nine months, right? I'm kind of one of those, uh, I don't know, three months, maybe. I can do maybe six weeks or three months. That, that's usually my style. Six months is a little too much for me. So you can think of it in terms of quarters or semesters or however you want to do it. But anyway, that's kind of how I like to plan. And so while I'm doing this, while I'm thinking of what I want to do, I've got all my materials. Now what I want to do is I want to put these materials into piles for each person. The first pile actually that I want to do is I want to make a pile just for our together time. So for our together time, I might want to keep like a Bible handy. And it's, I, I think I may have coined the idea no, no, way back, like maybe 15 years ago, maybe longer. I started realizing that keeping the things we covered together every day in a basket was a really smart idea. So I put that idea out on my blog. And since then, there's been a whole movement of, and I don't know if I started, I think it was probably one of those ideas everybody had at the same time. And so everybody's come up with the morning basket, right? And uh, Pam Barnhill does a great job talking about that. So anyway, I would put some my things in my together basket, things that we're reading together, such as a Bible. Uh, this is the Scarlet Pimpernel. It's just a novel I just pulled out. If that's the, our current novel, we might be reading something else. Maybe we're covering different science topics with this book right here. So I might have a pile. So this will go into my morning basket together time idea. So I'll make one pile for that. Then I might have a person who's just learning to read. So I am going to put in their pile, I'm going to put maybe this pictorial primer and maybe I'll add into that um, the lesson book. The first lesson book I'll put that in there and maybe I have a reader we're going to do together so I'll put that there and I'm just teaching them about numbers so I'll put this and that will be in their pile and I might have some different um, materials that I want to use maybe some paper some crayons you know give them some personal things i'll put them all in their pile and i'll do this for each child and i'll just have like i'll pick a table i'll just put all the different materials on the piles then i'm going to go through each portion so the next part you know first we're doing piles right so i've got to clear off my piles <laughs> it's getting kind of crowded in here okay so i'm going to take those piles and i'm going to decide so what should I expect of each child each day? So I'm going to create a little chart. Now I have these that you can print out. I showed an example in my last video. And I'm going to create these little columns, right? And some of us do five days a week. I don't like to do five days a week because I never know what's going to go on. I like to have a, a flex day where if we have appointments or... I need to go on some errands or I have like major project at home. So what I like to do is I like to number at the top. If you can see, I hope you can see. Okay. One, two, three, and four. Okay. That gives me four days a week. Now I don't use the days of the week. I don't go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, whatever it is. Because that way I can choose to start, I can start, if something happens on Monday, I can start the program on Tuesday and call that 
I call that number one. See what I'm saying? So I'm not stuck to the days of the week. It's kind of more flexible according to how life works. Now also on this side, I'm going to like put Bible. Sorry about, I'm writing kind of sideways weird. And this one will be like reading, reading and phonics, or you can just, you know, for, for brevity's sake, I'm just put LA for language arts, right? And right here I might put math. So I can put a big M if I just want to do that. And then below that, I might put C for content. Now that will cover anything else that we want to learn, such as science, history, etc. Now for Bible each day, let's say that this person, we do, we read the Bible together in our, our basket time. And so I might say, okay, well, let's just call this, we're going to, we're going to do a memory verse. So I'm going to, on this day, we're going to read, then we're going to, recite then we're going to um uh repeat and um then we're going to and i'll put ditto marks so for the next day that's what we're going to do again and then for this day then they will recite the verse okay so that gives them something to do so on day one they're going to read the card day two repeat the card out loud three one repeat it out loud and try to memorize it okay on fourth day we're going to recite it right and so for language arts the first day, let's say we're doing the McGuffey readers. So the first day they're going to, we're going to read the lesson. The second day, um, they are going to do copy work. The third day, they're going to do dictation. And the fourth day, they're going to do narration. Or you could switch this around, you know, if you want to do, let's say, oh, sorry. Let's say that on this day you will read, on this day you will narrate, then you will do copy work, and then you will do dictation. So that's how you can do that. So, you know, people always ask me, do you do one lesson a day? And I mean, there, there have been times when I did that. I honestly, if I had a child that was really going gangbusters and they could handle it, I would do that. But for most children, slow and steady wins the race, right? Okay, for math, let's say that you're, you are using um, number stories like I showed you. And let's say that's really dependent on me to read with them and go over the lesson. Well, there may be a time when I really have enough time just to really do a lesson a day. So we might do a portion a day for a while. So um, I, I don't have to necessarily write down the specifics of the pages. I can say uh, one, one portion. And that P stands for portion, that page. Uh, and just do that ditto marks. I don't have to keep writing that, right? So that's kind of our plan. Okay, let's say, and I'm not worried about getting through this entire book in three months. I'm not, I'm not going to go through here and go, well, let's see, we have to get through the entire book. So let's do this. Let's go to this page. Okay, there's 154 pages. Now let's calculate. How long will that take us to go through the entire thing? Okay, so we'll have to do five pages a day, blah, 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 blah. No, that's a killer, man. I can't do that. Sorry, I can't do that. <laughs> So I'll just do one page a day and we'll just go at the pace the child can handle. If the child's like really going really well, I might change this the next day. We might do two portions a day and, or if they can, they can handle as much, we'll do one portion here, one portion here, and we'll give a space. You know, there's all different kinds of ways you can do this. We're go we're not going, we're not trying to prove that we can get through all these Bible verses in three months or or read through the whole McGuffey's reader and la la la. I'm not, no, 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 no. I go at the pace the child can handle. If it takes us longer to get through something, if we can move faster, then it's according to what my child is geared for, not for anybody else but them. That's, that's what we homeschool for, so that we can tailor things to their abilities and their needs, right? So this is content right here. Now, content can mean a lot of things depending on the age. Sometimes we cover the content in our morning basket, right? But what I might do is I might say, okay, so but according to what we've been reading and studying together, now we're going to do a notebooking page, okay? So I might, you know, abbreviate notebooking page on Monday, or maybe I don't do it on Monday because Mondays tend to be crazy. So we're going to save that and we'll do that. We'll do a notebooking page on Tuesday. 
right? And then we might um, show and tell our notebooking pages on Friday. Because my kids, they like to really add a lot into their notebooking pages. So they might need, like on this day, we're kind of leaving it free because it's Monday, right? It's the first day and we need to get our bearings. So we're not going to overload this day. The second day, we can start a notebooking page. Then we have another day to um, fill it in better, do more coloring, maybe do some research, work on our handwriting. Then on the fourth day, we can show and tell. We can show our notebooking pages. So that works sometimes. Now there's different ways you can do this. Okay, so let's say that you have an older child and so they might do the morning time with you, but for the content time, not only are they doing notebooking pages, but they are reading. So you're going to have them read, 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 and then, oh, I'm sorry, maybe, well, maybe you want to have two, two days of reading and then you want to write an essay, right? And then this is revising the essay. Um, you can have your show and tell, you can present it then on the Monday or the first day of the next week if you want to. There are all kinds of different ways to do this. Some people, they might assign an essay or a notebooking page with really a lot of writing one week and the next week, the, on the next Friday, the child shows it. You know, it just depends on where your child is at. But anyway, basically, this is how you can set things up. You can you will have more things on this side, but you want to be careful not overloading this part. Remember, not only are your children sitting, this is their seat work basically, but they're spending time with you reading all these other amazing things together with you. And so a lot of the learning they're doing is actually when you sit together and you're doing that stuff. And also when you assign them books, like you can have, make a book list for them, or maybe it's part of their day in this assignment sheet thing. What my kids like to do. Okay. So I might have an assignment sheet that's filled out and I might change it every week. So I might go in there and change their stuff and every day when they when they do something then they just put an x through it like they read their lesson and it makes them feel you get that they get that dopamine hit when they can exit off so i've done that i feel really good about myself i finished that for today i hope that makes a lot of sense now another thing that you need to plan is how you're going to go about things each day it just saves your brain power if you kind of have a plan now, I'm not talking about a strict routine or a, a strict schedule. I'm talking about when you sit down to do your morning basket, let's say. Now, this could change according to the season you're in, right? But when you've already been dealing with, with squabbles, squibble squabbles, and uh, let's see, you know, you had to get breakfast on, then you had to fuss with people to make sure it was clean, and you know, everything like you might not feel you maybe you're not a morning person to begin with, <laughs> and so you're trying to get everything done. It helps just to you can put this on a sheet, you know, you can you can laminate it, you can have it there, or you can just have something in a binder someplace or in a notebook that says this is how we go about it. Okay, so you might have a list for yourself, and the first thing you might put is read a chapter in Bible and discuss. Now, sometimes you might be uh, reading from a devotional or something like that, but this is how we do it. Read a chapter in the Bible and discuss. Number two, read one poem out loud. Okay. That, uh, let's see that you, okay, well, let's, let's do it this way. Number two, and then you have options, right? You can say, read a poem, um, memorize scripture, sorry, my chalk broke, <laughs> memorize scripture. Uh, the, another option might be that um, you sing a hymn. Okay. Those are some options you can have for number two. Number three, you read uh, some science, like that science book I showed you. And number four, sorry, I'm running out of room. Number four, you might be 
might be read from your novel. Whatever novel that is, it's usually a classic novel, whatever it is. So this is your procedure so that you won't, won't forget what you're supposed to be sitting there for, right? You go read a chapter and discuss the Bible. Okay, read a poem or a memorize a scripture or sing a hymn. Whatever you're doing that day, you can rotate these things. Uh, number three, read some science from a science book. And number four, read a novel. You might even be doing some flashcards, maybe of a foreign language. Maybe you have a foreign language and you're, you're doing some flashcards, okay? That could be on there too. There's all kinds of things that you can include in this. Now, if you include too much, it's not going to be as meaningful as if you just concentrate on a few things and really enjoy them. Because I have seen these lists of all the things people are supposed to do. You know, Learning from Rest, that book by Sarah McKenzie is really, really a thoughtful, sweet book to to um, invest in and to read. And that'll kind of give you some balance to this. But that's just basically it. So that's creating an SOP just for the morning basket. And you might also have yourself a little list of how you go about things. Like, so sometimes if you will, number one, get the baby settled. Okay, so you have baby kids in your house, usually. And those baby kids, if they're not paid attention to in the morning, they're generally going to be wanting to beg. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was up there. Um, let me rewrite that. So um, get number one that you need to do is to get the babies settled. I think that little kids, they just need attention, right? They need to know that they're cared for and loved. So if you can pay a little attention to them, get them settled, read them a book, uh, sing some baby songs with them, get them a snack, get them settled, then you can do your morning basket. Then you can, like, let's say that you're the first thing you do, you're going to get the older is going. So older kids usually are mature enough that you can just get them going, right? Just get them set make sure that are you, so they're sitting in their places. Hopefully they have a little quiet or something at the other end of the table. They get their materials out. They have what they need to be get done and they are going with that. Then you can spend time with the pre-readers and, and maybe, and the, and the early math kids okay and you if you think about it you only usually have to spend maybe 15 minutes a piece on the on just concentrating on them and usually you only have like one or two of those at a time that really need your concentrated energy okay so you do this in the morning now after a couple of hours of this um you know your the little kids can go off playing the older kids are still working then you can have in your list, like for number five, then you can say, okay, sorry, I'm way off the screen. So for number five, you can say, okay, now we're going to have a quick clean, right? And then we are going to go on a walk. Okay, going on a walk just clears the air, gets all the energies out. Then you come back, and you're going to have some lunch, right? And so over lunch, maybe you can save some of your reading time for over lunch. While everybody's sitting there munching away, you can either be reading to your children or you can listen to an audiobook while you're eating. Sometimes you can be playing some classical music or, or maybe looking at some beautiful pictures on your television screen. <laughs> you know, all that good Charlotte Mason art and music, right? <laughs> Done the easy way. All right, now that that covers all that up to that point. After lunch, then your olders. So then we've covered through lunch. Okay, then the olders complete work, or they can um, also. I'm writing off the screen again. Sorry. Okay, uh, your olders complete their work or they can do their hobbies and projects at this time. Okay, your littles 
can be napping. And that's when you need a little quiet time too. All right. So then after this, usually after this, then everybody just has free play. So then you're going to have free play and meal prep for dinner. Then you'll have dinner, clean up in the evening. The kids can have time with dad. Maybe you guys, maybe you can watch a historical movie on TV or something like that. Like, and so that way you can have a streaming service, whatever it is. And then you can uh, read stories before bed. I mean, the whole day, right? The whole day is filled with all kinds of learning. So um, that's what you're planning for. And it's, it's good to have some things just kind of laying around the house. Uh, let's see. Some things you can have is maps just laying around the house and atlases. Those are fun. You can have uh, boxes that have like uh, STEM type stuff in them for the kids for special play. And so that's something they can do if, if they've been really good. That's just something, a reward. You have some STEM special play items and maybe some science experiments, that kind of thing. Um, you can have, uh, you can allow them to cook things like cook and bake things. And that can be part of your whole program. There's so much that you could add into your day if you see that you've got the main stuff done. Now, another thing you can plan for is you can have times where you plan for like a series of like six weeks for just unit studies. Then you can have maybe four weeks for autodidact and uh, autodidact. I should do a whole video on autodidact. It's a really cool way to do things. It just lets your kids free roam. And then you might have some things like you might have a daily Bible time. You might have them do a notebooking page a week or an essay a week, but they get to choose what they're going to study. And you can keep math going at the same time. So you can keep math going that whole time, but just give them the opportunity to choose what they want to learn. Kids love this and they thrive as long as they have times where you're concentrating on these other things. So we've got unit studies for six weeks, maybe four weeks of autodidact, and then a, another six weeks on only academics. That means every day you spend more time just on the three R's and the rest is up to them. Okay. So you could concentrate more on like the McGuffey's lessons, your grammar, your math, and some writing and then don't plan anything don't do a morning basket don't do anything else just do those things every day and just really really hone in on those skills and so i found that i go in kind of cycles of all of these different ways of doing it and i really love it this way <laughs> okay oh by the way with unit studies you add math in there too and bible of course um but and my and and when I do unit studies for that time, uh, our reading all has to do with our uh, subject that we're studying, like a period of history or something like that. So these are different ways you can plan as well. And if you're doing it this way, you just use that same chart and whatever you're doing in each of these things, then you just add into that chart. And uh, I I have that I have a free printout for that on my blog. Um, on my website, momdelights.com, in the freebie section, you can find that easily. So with that, I'd like to give you just a few other tips. One is never give up on reading aloud to your children. Okay, my children sit in on our read alouds even when they're in their 20s. Okay, and also never stop learning yourself. You are the greatest example they, your children, will have to follow. Be Sure, and make your plans so you are you are learning things right alongside your children. I plan what is interesting to me. <laughs> okay, yeah, and so that way, well, while I am teaching my children, I am learning with them, and my enthusiasm becomes contagious because I want to know more. Even things I've learned before, I always learn something new. So when I am enthusiastic about what we're learning, they become enthusiastic. 
See, the whole idea of homeschooling is to get your children so enthused about learning that they just can't stop. It becomes part of everything they do. They spend their whole life learning new things and they become great teachers and they just they just are more open to what God has to show them. So I hope this blesses you. I hope this helps you while you are planning for your own kids. <laughs> you have a wonderful day. Please like and subscribe and all that stuff. And yes, 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 we are on the cusp. I'm telling you, I can taste success. We're almost done with the first commonplace book. So hopefully look for it soon. I'm sorry to keep stringing you along. <laughs> you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.